Welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Jonathan Frank with Tennessee Tech University. And I'm Shan Stout with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Shan, this uh, just might be our biggest episode to date. We've got two really big names on the program today. That's right. Now we're talking to Putnam County Mayor Randy Porter and Tennessee Tech's Vice President of Student Affairs, the lovely Dr. Cynthia Polk Johnson, a.k.a. tech students know her as Dr. Pojo. You know, I loved getting the inside scoop from Dr. Pojo about College Town Kickoff. Uh, For listeners that don't know, that was an event we had uh, here in the community back in August at the start of the semester uh, in downtown Cookville, uh, really a block party type event. We had a Ferris wheel, we had food trucks, we had Sean Kingston, and Dr. Pojo and her team at Student Affairs worked really hard to pull it off alongside great partners like you, Shan, and the Visitors Bureau, and she brought us behind the scenes of how it all came together. Listen, anytime you can get a Ferris wheel and a zip line downtown, town at the Cookville Depot. My hat's off to you. It was a wonderful success and we had great support from all of our community partners and businesses along with our two biggest cheerleaders which is City Mayor Lauren Wheaton and County Mayor Randy Porter. You know Shan I really enjoyed talking with Mayor Porter about how he uses social media and Facebook. He's got this audience of 50,000 community members now who come to his page for news and information and as we heard in our conversation with him that that wasn't really part of some big plan. Uh, It kind of just happened organically. Uh, And that interview with Mayor Porter is actually where we start today's episode. So up first, our conversation with Putnam County Mayor Randy Porter. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by Putnam County Mayor Randy Porter. Now, as our county mayor since 2014, Mayor Porter brings over 40 years of leadership and technical experience to our community. He began working for Putnam County in 1980 as a paramedic. And then in 1983, he was promoted to EMS and 911 director and served in that capacity for 30 years. Putnam County continues to experience significant growth on Mayor Porter's watch. And in fact, more than 1,500 new homes were built here in Putnam County between 2014 and 2021 alone. Mayor Porter is a strong supporter of Tennessee Tech, where he also studied as a student. He's been married to his wife, Melanie, for 35 years, and they have one daughter and one beautiful granddaughter. Mayor Porter also hosts his own weekly podcast and radio show today in Putnam County. And that's where he interviews community and business leaders about the many great things happening across our community. Mayor Porter, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Shan. It's an honor to be with you. Now, Mayor Porter, you are soon coming up on 10 years as mayor of Putnam County, and that is a huge milestone but you've also served our community in some capacity for decades longer than that. When you look back on your many years of public service, what thing makes you most proud? I know that's a tough question. I think being able to look back on a career and seeing all the lives that you've touched. And I say that in the most humble way. I I think I have a servant's heart. I started out my career as a paramedic and and you're touching lives, you're, you're helping folks carried that on all the way through my career as whether that be as the 911 director or the EMS director, the coroner, and now mayor, is to be able to, to see all those lives that, that you were able to touch. And in most cases, in a good way, my job as a mayor is, is all about helping folks. And, and I think that any kind of you're in elected office, I think you have to look at it like that, that the citizens put you here because they trust you and, and you, you know, to be able to take on issues and problems that they may have. And that's a big part of my job. So when I look back over the last, you know, 30 or 40 years, uh, I think of all those folks uh, that, uh, that you've been able to help and, and today to be able to continue help. So I, I think in, in my career, you're not always going to make a lot of money working for county government in EMS and, and 9 and all those kind of things, but the rewards that you receive uh, from from being able to to help folks is much more than, than any money can buy. So I think that uh, 
that's the biggest thing that I look back on. And I'm thankful that God allowed me to, to be in this place and to be able to do all that. Uh, Mayor Porter, we've got to talk about your social media because your Facebook page has amassed nearly 50,000 Facebook followers, and it's really become an important source of news and information for the community. Uh, you regularly post news about Tennessee Tech, about community events, new construction, business openings, and more. And uh, I'll just share a really quick story here. Uh, there was an event uh, at Tech earlier this year, we were looking to you know get some visibility on. We thought, hey, a post from Mayor Porter would really help us out. I called your office and asked to speak to the person who handles your social media, and they said that's the mayor. So you're doing this all yourself. Tell us about your social media strategy. Uh, do you plan out your posts in advance? How does how does that sequencing work? And did you ever expect to have fifty thousand followers on social media? Jonathan, I didn't think I'd ever have a, a social media account when I started out. When I went to run for office in 23, 2013 for the 2014 election, my campaign manager said, Randy, you need to set you up a Facebook account. And I said, no, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to get into that. And uh, he said, if you want to get elected, you're going to have to. So I did kind of amazed at the amount of followers I got uh, off, off of that site. Then when got elected and came into office in 2014. I'll never forget the day I was pulling into the courthouse and Mayor Shelton, the city mayor, called me and said, hey, let us, let's set up two uh, Facebook accounts and each one of us do and, and let's start sharing stuff about the community. And I said, uh, I don't, I don't know. I said, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to have all my hands full, you know, with everything I'm going to do. And we got to talking and we figured out it was a way to get our message and the news and events out to the community. And I said, okay, I'll try it. Never dreamed that it would turn into what it has and with almost 50,000 followers, but it's been great. But it can be a blessing and a curse. Uh, you uh, you start putting that stuff out and then folks begin to expect that, that uh, you're going to give them the ideas and the events and the news and all the things going on. So. Uh, it's 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 been great though. It's been a way for us to uh, get stuff out to the community that that may not get any other way. I do my own. Uh, I started doing my own from the beginning. I haven't changed. The big thing about social media now is to being able to schedule stuff that goes out. So I work on Saturdays a lot, usually a half a day, and it allows me to come in and catch up with uh, things that I haven't been able to get done during the week. There's nobody here, and the phones aren't ringing. I'm able to schedule a lot of the things on Facebook and, and Instagram and so forth that will then post during the week. That has been a big help to me. And you see stuff during the week also that will happen, new events that you find out about, uh, awards, all kinds of things. So there's always stuff that I'm posting during the week, but a lot of that is is due to the scheduling feature that, that I'm very thankful for. And I just thank everyone for following my page and, and being a part of that and and getting all the uh, the, the good stuff that, that comes back from that. You get a lot of comments and we've learned a lot uh, from citizens that you, you post something about a new project or something and they'll make comments and you think, wow, I hadn't thought about that. And it gives me ideas for, for future stuff and things we may need to change on those projects. So it, it's been a blessing in, in, in the end to be able to have that and to be able to use that to reach people. I love everything about that. And I appreciate how you're always willing to help bolster and support community events and all the things going on. And I know that that's been a useful tool for us at the Visitors Bureau. Uh, we both work very closely together in uh, working toward promoting these things. And, and you're just, you're such an asset to us, but something that is also unique in your role uh, with Putnam County is the strong working relationship between you as county mayor and each of the city mayors. I've seen you all in rooms together over and over. There's always mutual respect, mutual admiration. Uh, you're not uh, pointing fingers or or speaking ill of one another or trying to take the other one down. There's not any of that. You work in this collaborative goal of doing what's best for the community. And you don't always see that across other counties. And I know you know that as well. Tell me a little bit about the partnership between the county, the city, the business community, and of course, Tennessee Tech, 
how do you keep everyone rowing in the same direction? Well, Shan, thank you. That that can be difficult sometimes, but when I came into office in 2014, there was not that great working relationship, or there hadn't been in the past with city, county, chamber, hospital, tech. And one of the things that I wanted to change, and it was the goal of some other folks too, I can't take all the credit, is that we wanted to build that working relationship to where that we knew we could always do more together than we could do separately. And in watching government operate for, for years with me being in my position at EMS and now I'm one, I saw those times when I was a little bit embarrassed by the way that maybe commissioners and councilmen and folks might argue and fuss with each other. And there's just no way that benefits the community. So we started on that to try to fix that and and brought everybody together. And we all agreed that uh, we wanted to work together. And, and one of the good things that happened in, in 2014 when I ran for office was those of us that got elected, a lot of us, we, we had been friends for years and years and years before we ran for office. So it kind of made it easy uh, to get together because we were used to going out and eat and all those kind of things beforehand. And so we started it and it just kept getting better and better and better and, and, and rolling along. We started bringing in all these new businesses and new jobs and, and the community was flourishing and growing. And, and the one thing that, that made me know that we were doing good is we went to the TWSAA thing in Nashville where that we were trying to get it for another four years. And there was another community, actually a couple of communities that were fighting against us. They were trying to get it to come to their community. So we all loaded up in this big van and we went to, we went to Nashville and, and we all had our little dog and pony show that we put on. Each one of us had a part, city mayor, county mayor, tech president, chamber, all these folks together. And I mean, we had it, we had it down and, and we did a great presentation. And when we went outside for the other community to come in, we noticed there was only two of them. And we thought, well, maybe something's happened. The other folks couldn't come. So they did their presentation. Afterwards, TWSAA said, you win, uh, you get to keep it. And, and it turned out great. We started asking questions as to why there were only two people there that, that came from the other community. We found out that the city mayor and the county mayor disliked each other so much that they wouldn't even ride in the same vehicle together. And so we started started thinking about that. And we had a, a consultant that came in and looked at our community after that. And they were telling us how rare it is for us to be able to work together and get along and not have those feuds and fights. And we realized that we had a great thing that we didn't need to take for granted and we wanted to make sure that we kept it. And for the past nine or 10 years, we've been able to do that. And that's my number one goal is to make sure that we continue to do that. And I, I try to do everything I can to make it easy to get along with and respect those other folks and us all work together. Well, Mayor Porter, I want to say as somebody that moved back to the community fairly recently, I see that and that that resonates with me and I respect and appreciate that. But something else we do want to ask you about is your podcast. You know, this is a fairly new podcast, so we, we want to get the uh, expertise of a seasoned podcast host. Tell us more about Today in Putnam County. How did it start? What do you find most rewarding about it? And based off your experience, uh, do you have any tips for this program? I never dreamed, Jonathan, that I would be doing a radio show or a podcast I mean, I have this country accent that I was born with, and I just can't, uh, I can't get rid of it. it it's me. Uh, but the, uh, I was doing a live interview at the radio station. They used to have a song on the morning show, and, and they said, wow, I said, Randy, you would do a good job with a radio show. I said, you could get people that normally we might not be able to get to do interviews that would come and, and would let you interview them. And just think of all the great things you could bring out in that show and all the guests that you could have and I fought that for for several years and and just didn't think I had the time or or the ability to do that and had a friend of mine's radio station just kind of kept on me and and he said well just try it so I did and and the first uh, first radio show I did the interviews that I did were with the developers uh, of the shops at Eagle Point that brought that huge shopping center into us and there was there was three of them and I interviewed them and 
the show got a lot of likes and people were talking about it afterwards and uh, well maybe i'll try another one or two and five years later uh the show's fixing to hit its fifth uh anniversary coming up in november uh, still going strong and now it plays on uh, several radio stations on the weekends, and then it, I put it up as a podcast for folks to be able to listen to on their phone or the computer at any time. And it's just been an unbelievable blessing to me to be able to interview these folks, but but at the same time to get that those those interviews and and that message out to the community of folks that that they want to hear from, and it's it's a lot of work. I find that I put a lot of time into it, making sure that the questions I ask are things that the community wants to hear. And to do those leading questions, to get those people to talk about the things that the community wants to hear. And it's just been great. And I love it now. And and the folks at the radio station have been great uh, to, to promote and, and help me with it, give me all kinds of pointers on being able to do it better. And, and I thoroughly enjoy it. And and it's exciting now to be able to look out at, at the folks in the community that are doing great things, to be able to bring them in, talk to them, and, and to hear their stories. Uh, there's always a backstory to everything, and to hear some of their stories and get them to talk about their lives and what they're doing in Putnam County, it's just been unbelievable. So I would encourage you uh, to don't stop, uh, to keep going, uh, pick folks that in the community that uh, have are trying to do great things that uh, are of interest to the citizens of folks that, that want to hear from them and uh, don't listen to your podcast yourself. <laughs> that, that's the advice that I would give you because if you're not careful, you'll be your worst critique. Uh, get someone else uh, that's that listens to it and says, oh, hey, Jonathan or Shan, you know, if you do this or do that, you might make it better. But uh, I stopped listening to my own and, and uh, let other folks critique it. And, and I, it, it can be a great thing for the community if you do that. Okay, I'm going to take your advice, Mayor Porter. So this podcast will be coming your way soon and you can give me your critiques. <laughs> yeah, I, I listen to you all the time on, the, uh, on all your videos. Let me tell you, Jonathan, she is the, uh, what is the right word? <laughs> She is the queen of videos and and uh, and doing these TikToks and and all this. Uh, Shan, if I had your talent, I wouldn't be at the Visitors Bureau. I'd be on national TV somewhere uh, <laughs> doing a doing a full hour long segment. I'm sure he's going to ask me for a favor later, Jonathan. He's just sweet talking me now. Well, it's all true. I agree, Mayor Porter, but we're glad that she is with the Visitors Bureau, and I'm really glad that she agreed to do this podcast. <laughs> Mayor Porter, I appreciate all that you're doing. You're very, um, I call you a grassroots mayor in the fact that you have an open door policy. People feel very connected to you, like they can talk to you in a regular conversation bring their needs and requests to you, but you're also innovative doing things like podcasts and radio interviews and having a social media following that is very unusual for a person in your position. It's you're really using all the possible tools to connect with the community. And that also connects with all ages. And I appreciate that. It's been wonderful to talk to you today. But finally, at the end of our interview, it's time to answer the question that we ask each of our interviewees. And here we go. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I would not have met my wife had it not been for Tennessee Tech. I, I moved here to go to college at Tennessee Tech and moved from a small rural town, raised on a farm all my life, and came to Tennessee Tech uh, thinking, you know, I didn't want to be a farmer for the rest of my life. Don't tell Sam that. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, that was my goal is, is I wanted to do something. I was the first person in my family to ever go to college. But Tennessee Tech changed my life because while I was here in Cookville, I met my wife, Melanie. Uh, we've been married almost 36 years now, and uh, it's uh, it's just been unbelievable. And, and so tech changed my life in many, many ways that we could go on for 20 or 30 minutes to be telling you about all of those. But I would not have my soulmate right now. The best thing that's ever happened to me if it had not been for Tennessee Tech. 
Well, you know, you're not the only one that has had that answer to this question. So there's a lot of lucky men out there that thank tech for the wonderful women <laughs> in their life. So this is this is a recurring theme that I'm seeing. Mayor Porter, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you for having me. Uh, good luck with the podcast, guys. Uh, support you 100 percent. And anything I can do to help, let me know. Well, thank you, Mayor. And for our listeners, learn more about Mayor Porter and our local Putnam County government at putnamcountytn.gov. Welcome back to College Town Talk. We are now joined by Tennessee Tech's Vice President for Student Affairs, Dr. Cynthia Polk Johnson. Dr. Pojo, as she is affectionately known to many on our campus, is a passionate educator who has served in higher education for more than 20 years. At Tennessee Tech, she oversees the Accessible Education Center, the Center for Student Engagement, the Counseling Center, the Dean of Students, the Eagle Card Office, Health Services, the Leona Lusk Officer Black Cultural Center and Intercultural Affairs, the Mark L. Burnett Student Recreation and Fitness Center, I'm going to need a drink of water. The Roden University Center, University Housing and Residential Life, and University Police. Outside of work, Dr. Pojo enjoys spending quality time with her husband and two daughters. Dr. Pojo, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, Jonathan. I'm so happy to be here today. We're happy to have you. We have so much we want to ask you, but let's start with something uh, pretty recent. You and your team in Student Affairs just put on a major first-of-its-kind event for tech students and the Cookville community. Uh, of course, we're talking about College Town Kickoff. And for our listeners who didn't get a chance to attend, this was a block party in downtown Cookville with a Ferris wheel, a zip line down Broad Street, inflatables, food trucks, live music, and much more. Uh, it was a great time. I was there, uh, really enjoyed it. So where did you get the idea for this event and how did you pull it all off? Sure. Well, I can tell you that I think the the concept of this idea has been around for quite some time. Our president, Dr. Phil Oldham, has had a vision of the community coming together with our students and our campus community for quite some time. Um, and so he was able to share that vision with me as early as my interview, actually, uh, to see you know what my thoughts were. And after being here and seeing just how Cookville comes together anyway, our students uh, readily kind of get in there and get engaged, it was easy to kind of figure out, okay, what would be next steps? Um, and I can tell you just pulling the community leaders together uh, from everyone from, oh gosh, all the city officials uh, with the Chamber of Commerce to Shan and her group with the Visitors Bureau to the Cookville Police Department to Leisure Services to almost everyone you can think of in the community along with our campus staff. Dr. Ben Stubbs really jumped right in. He's over our student engagement uh, and activities area. And I can tell you just getting the students, the faculty, the staff, the community, all of the various stakeholders involved, it just came out to be just such a wonderful experience. Uh, one like no other, probably, that that has been, um, you know, that has come to Tennessee Tech as well as uh, Cookville. And so I can tell you that it, it was uh, everything I think we had imagined in the sense of uh, all the parts kind of working out and working together. Um, and, and of course, there are lessons learned. We, we, we are going from this with, with so many lessons learned, uh, but it was so exciting to see our students and our community come together as one, especially during the first full week of classes. Well, Dr. Pojo, I'm going to tell you, it was a magical event. When you first yes. talked about <laughs> what this event would look like, it yeah. sounded like, oh my goodness, there's no way they're going to add all of that <laughs> to the West Side as sure. some of students to do. But then when we saw it with our own eyes, I'm telling you, the Cookville Depot never looked so beautiful as it did with a big giant Ferris wheel behind it and yes. zip lining down the street in front of it. I mean, and the concert and the students yes. out there cheering and enjoying themselves. I know that that moment had to be uh, just a, a moment of success for you to say, this is what we worked so many months for. This is what we yes. wanted to give these students. And I think they felt very welcomed and very included. Now, speaking of someone who's welcomed, you just celebrated 
two years with Tennessee Tech and you're already such an admired and relied upon figure on this campus and across our community. But I want to go back to your first days in this role because it was the summer of 2021. And as we all know, that was still a very chaotic time across sure. our world, given all that was happening with COVID and the barriers we were experiencing. What 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 was it that drew you to Tennessee Tech? And uh, what were those first days and weeks like for you here? Sure. So I can tell you, to be honest with you, I didn't know much about tech uh, prior to moving here, but I had heard of the school and I knew that it was the only uh, tech school in the state. Uh, but when I began to do my research on it, I saw all the many wonderful things that tech has put already put in place. And that was super exciting for me to see a committed staff, to see faculty who were engaged, to see students who were involved, not just on campus, but in the community. Uh, so the website really drew me in. All of that wonderful information that I was able to glean from the site. And after talking with people who knew about the university and the leadership of the university. So that was initially what drew me to tech. Um, you know, I, Coming into this role as a vice presidency, vice president, I really didn't know what to expect. I've been doing student affairs my whole career uh, and a little bit in academic affairs, but primarily student affairs. And I knew I wanted a position where I felt comfortable, where I felt like it was a good fit for me. And coming into this role uh, during the pandemic, you know, when COVID was, was really rampant, I can tell you that having a community that was so supportive uh, was really what made the difference. So when I got here initially, all the groups were concerned about student health, student safety, their well-being, you know, from the residence halls to the cafeteria to them having events. And all of us were able to come together collectively to make wise decisions around that. Like what's in the best interest of our students when we talk about putting on events, when we talk about getting folks together or not getting people together or doing it online, you know, all of those things uh, were important decisions. And I can tell you just coming here, knowing that from athletics to our health services to counseling, uh, we had supportive staff in place and people who genuinely cared about the community's safety, right? Our, and, and not just students, but faculty and staff as well and employees. And so I think that was what made a world of difference for me because I knew I was coming to a place um, where people really, again, genuinely cared about uh, people's well-being and their safety. Dr. Pojo, I know that another project you recently helped spearhead was the renovation of the Leona Lusk Officer Black Cultural Center and the expansion of the intercultural affairs space in the university center. And I had a chance to attend the grand reopening and there was a lot of joy and excitement in that room. And I know this is something that uh, you all had worked towards for a while. So wh why was that project important to you? Oh, it was so important, Jonathan. One, because uh, the Black Cultural Center has been a staple or pillar is what I like to say uh, in this community and on this campus for over 30 years. And so being able to uh, kind of help spearhead spearhead efforts around renovating that space, bringing it up to be more attractive and be more of a place where students can say, I really feel at home. I really feel like this is a place for me. Um, and I know you know, from all of the stories I've heard from Mark Burnett and Rob Owens and Charia Campbell, that has always been the case uh, for the BCC. And so being able to continue that legacy, uh, but also introducing this concept of intercultural affairs, how we will broaden our perspectives around diversity, uh, especially in this climate, I think is, is critically important to our success in terms of being able to move forward. And we want all of our community members to see that the BCC, as well as our ICA, what I like to call the IA or ICA lounge, is a place for everybody, right? It's where we can come together and really be ourselves, be as authentic uh, as we'd like to be, and really maybe even have some tough conversations, you know? And I think that's what really makes a community better, when we can all be ourselves, bring our full selves to campus. Every person should realize that they matter, that they belong, uh, that they are valuable 
valued and that they have a role in this community, right, to help make things better. Um, and so I think that's exactly what we we what we want to see happen, what we will see happen as we continue to grow here at Tech. I appreciate hearing that in your own words, and and it's very important. You know, it's it's hard enough for someone coming to campus to college for the first time and they already anyone on campus feels maybe they don't belong but they want mm -hmm. to belong so making sure that everyone is included in that yes. sense of belonging is so very important now yes. something we're working on every day speaking of newcomers coming to cookville uh, we're working at the Visitors Bureau to encourage people to come check out Cookville for themselves, not yes. just in their, their free time as a tourist, but also these freshmen and the freshmen's families who are coming to see Cookville and kind of seeing where they're, they're landing their children sure. and want to know what Cookville is all about. But you have a, a, an interesting perspective being that you are fairly new to Cookville yourself and checking out Tennessee's college town. And yes. uh, how do you see Cookville outside of campus? If you were talking to, say, a first time visitor or a freshman who doesn't know much about the city, what would you say are your favorite things to do in the must see places here across Putnam County? Sure. Well, I will certainly say there are so many, uh, Shan, and I can tell you, you don't realize that until you're here. <laughs> you know, a lot of people will drive down 40 and kind of miss this town, but I can tell you uh, just being in the city, being in the town, you see so many different ways that you can get involved, you know, especially outside of campus. Now, campus is gorgeous, and a lot of people will say that, but I think knowing Cookville from the, you know, whether you're interested in outdoors Cookville, or you're interested, in, like me, in the food options here in Cookville. You know, I've been to 37 Cedar. I've been to Seven Senses, you know, places like that. I've been to World Foods. You know, the pizza is awesome. I would also say that um, one of the places that I didn't realize was here until very recently, and my family and I have enjoyed, is Thrive Family Fun Center. And so a lot of people don't realize that that type of activity uh, and opportunity for engagement is here, but we've had an opportunity to get our students there before. And it is just a, an, a, another magical experience, as we talked about earlier, because you can, you know, you can either go with a group of friends or, uh, you know, a small group of of just just friends and family. Uh, but either way, it's a good time. It's, it's fun. Uh, it's exciting. And I think just being able to say, uh, you know, I did that and I did it in Cookville, you know, is it, it, amazing. So I certainly um, hear people talk about ways that they get involved in going camping or, um, you know, different things for the weekend. I think all of that, you know, it's just so many different opportunities here, regardless of what your interest is. And one of the biggest things about Cookville is um, it still feels very intimate. Um, you know, you go to a lot of places now where you just kind of feel disconnected. But here, once you get engaged, you can feel very connected to the people, to the sounds and to the sights. Uh, and so I think a lot of times, you know, places like that uh, are hard to leave. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, it's certainly a good time for, for anything, regardless of your interests. Uh, Dr. Pojo, as we were preparing for this conversation today, one thing that stood out to me about your the career that you've had is that uh, it seems you always wanted to be doing exactly this. Uh, you studied and earned degrees in student affairs specifically. Uh, you've worked in many different institutions and in many states, but you were always in these student-facing roles uh, dating back, I believe, to your earliest days as an enrollment counselor at Mississippi State. So what is it about student affairs and working with college students that is so rewarding and meaningful to you? Well, you know, it's interesting because at the undergraduate level, I really didn't know about student affairs. It wasn't until I decided to pursue a master's degree um, and this whole world came open to me as it relates to student affairs and higher education. Um, and just starting to work with, as you mentioned, as an enrollment counselor at Mississippi State, 
I mean, I got to meet so many people. It was an opportunity for me to travel. I had my own territory and it was about getting out there, really connecting with people on kind of a personal level, sometimes within groups as well, from students, faculty, staff, alumni to community members. Um, it was an opportunity to really engage and to promote all the programs and services that the university had to offer. I absolutely loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. It was something that I became very passionate about. I mean, it was one of those jobs. You've, you've probably heard the saying, find a job or career that you love and you'll never work a day in your life. And that's what student affairs is to me, higher education in general. You know, when I started thinking about being a leader in this field, it was all because of students pushing me and driving me to be better, to be better for them. Um, and as an administrator, I get to do that every day. I get to see them flourish. Uh, it's so rewarding when they come in as maybe timid and shy, you know, first year students. And by the time they become, you know, juniors and seniors, they they blossom, you know, they found their niche, they found their passion, they know what they want to do when they leave us. That's 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 all so meaningful for me and very purposeful for me. And so I I continue to um, grow from these experiences every time I meet someone new or a family that's really trying to figure it out and I can help them kind of navigate uh, processes or procedures. All of those things are exciting for me. And so um you know, I, I just, I, yeah, I, I have fallen in love <laughs> with this work um, and with the people that I get to do it with. Well, you know, Dr. Pedro, I was going to tell you that if you ever got over this student affairs thing, you could come work at the Visitors Bureau after your beautiful speech about all the great things to do in Cookville. But I can see that that's never going to happen for us. We're just going to have to dream on. <laughs> now, we like to end each interview by asking the same question, and I love this question. What is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? You know, I was really thinking about this question because I think in so many ways, this institution, uh, the people here have all impacted me in some way. Uh, I'm a better leader because of tech. You know, this opportunity to be a vice president, I think I mentioned earlier that it had to be a good fit. It had to be the right place with the right people, with the right uh, vision. Um, and I've been inspired here to do great work. I've been encouraged to do great work. And I don't get that just from walking around campus. This is engaging with uh, all the folks in student affairs and many of the people we get to collaborate with across campus, in the community, just pushing us to be better. Our students, you know, our students are very serious about their academics. And that in itself is quite um, just motivating, you know, because when you have students who are passionate and who are ready to engage, that just, uh, I've heard the saying, you know, um, when the student is really ready to learn, the teacher will appear. Well, every day, <laughs> every day we get to see that. Our students help us think uh, from working with SGA in the many platforms on how they want to see services better uh, for our students. So I think it's, um, you know, that's that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's how uh, tech has impacted me uh, in so many ways. And I'm constantly growing as a leader. Dr. Pocho, this has been just a lovely time that we've spent with you here today. Thank you so much for being our guest on College Town Talk. Thank you. And for our listeners, learn more about Dr. Pojo and the Division of Student Affairs at Tennessee Tech by visiting tntech.edu slash SA. We want to thank Mayor Porter and Dr. Pojo for being our guests today. And if you're enjoying this podcast, please take a moment to subscribe, review, and share. Join us again next week for more conversations from right here in Cookville, Tennessee's college town. College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.